The following video is not made for kids. Viewer discretion is advised. Hello to my subscribers. This is the TFangi coming to you with what will hopefully be a successful review. And today we're going to be taking a look at not one or even two Transformers action figures, but today we're going to be taking a look at the latest set of weaponizers to be released in the Transformers. And, it, and they are none other than the Transformers Legacy United Infernak Universe. Earth action figures. There have been a total of six released so far. One was released as an exclusive inside the uh, uh, Legacy United uh, Leader Class uh, Thundertron Star Raider, fig R Raider box set. And then we have three Deluxes and two Core Class figures that were released at mass retail. So uh, the first one that was released was here in the middle was uh, Deluxe Class Magnius. This then we had Deluxe Class Shard, who's the only female Infernak Universe Transformer. Then we had Nucleus, who's uh, uh, mold mates with uh, Magnius, a retool of him. The fourth, the fourth deluxe, which was the exclusive figure, was Calcitron, and as I said, he's only available in the uh, uh, leader class as a Thundertron box set. And I'm still debating if I'm actually going to include Calcitron in this review or not. Uh, I was debating about. I included him in the thumbnail just to show everyone that there's in fact a six um, Transformers from the Infernak Universe. And basically these Infernak Universe Transformers figures, they're loosely inspired by the Rock Lords characters from the GoBots franchise. So these are Transformers action figures that transform, that are whose bodies are made out of rocks, stones, and they basically, and unlike the actual... Uh, rock lords from the GoBots who turn into actual rocks. The uh, Infernak universe, the new Transformers rock lords transform into stone vehicles. So, uh, yeah. So give. So here's a uh, Calcitron inside a uh, Thundertron's box set. I may release. Uh, I may get Calcitron out of there and uh, air and uh, include him in this review. That you. But I'll probably bring. I'll probably uh, bring him in for when I review uh, Thundertron. Um, but yeah, there's Calcitron in his robot mode and his alt mode of a stone pickup truck. He also is a retool of Magnius, just like Nucleus is. Is and he is a transform second choice between both modes in 12 steps. I'll show off the others' boxes right now. So bringing back Magnius, here he is inside the box. There's some artwork of his uh, uh, stone truck mode. There's a close-up of his face and his robot mo mode around, on the back of the box. Uh, even though Calcitron's the same mold as Magnius, Magnius is shown transforming, but being able to transform back and forth between both modes in just 10 steps. And there's the weaponizer gimmick with these guys uh, being able to break down. Uh, not all of the parts for them can be used for the weaponizer gimmick. There's some parts of them that uh, don't quite uh, integrate as well as others do, so I'm not even going to show off the uh, weaponizer gimmick, but... I've just been collecting all these figures because I love the idea of not only the Rock Lords now being official Transformers characters in one way, shape, or form, but also uh, the idea that they transform into stone vehicles instead of just actual rocks. That makes them a lot more interesting. And um, while we're on uh, Magnius and the figures that are mold mates with him, here is um, Nucleus, who was released in Wave 3 of the uh, Legacy United line. There's, his, there's him inside the box, his... Alt mode, owed his robot mode face, and also his robot mode charging into battle. Battle and all three of these, um, not all of these uh, figures have the same box art on the uh, side of the box for the poster image of the uh, uh, 40th anniversary line. Um, and as you can see, uh, Magnus has one side of the poster image while Nucleus has the other side. So if you get both Magnus and Nucleus together, you can complete the. Uh, poster image for the Legacy United line, so that's a really nice thing to see there. And because Nucleus has the um, uh, side with Optimus Prime and the side that has more Autobots than it does uh, Decepticons, um, Ons, I'm, Ons, I personally, but Ons, along with the fact that he's mostly white, I'm leaning towards Nucleus possibly being a more heroic member of the uh, Infernak universe universe uh, rock lords uh, on the back of the box there's his robot mode his alt mode and again same gimmick uh, the images aren't quite the same as they are for uh, Magnus it's uh, partially because uh, 
There's a lot more newly sculpted parts on Nucleus. Yes, but he transforms back and forth between both robot mode and alt mode in just 10 steps. Um, as far as um, the three uh, figures that are mold mates with each other, Magnus, Nucleus, and also Calcitron, uh, Nucleus is the most unique of the three. He has the more, the most retooled parts. Parts to him. Uh, the last deluxe class figure is the uh, is the most unique of the uh, six Infernak Universe Transformers that we've gotten in the Legacy United line because uh, this mold hasn't been repainted or retooled so far into any of the uses, so it's a one-time use, and it is none other than Legacy United Shard. It came to my attention, and right after Shard was released, that she's in fact supposed to be a female Transformers character, and I believe so far she's the only female Infernak Universe Rock Lord that's been released. Whether or not she'll be repainted and retooled in her in, into future... Uh, female Infernic Universe Rock Lords are. Whether or not we'll get more unique molds is uncertain at this point, but the fact that we've only gotten six Infernic Universe Rock Lords in the Legacy United line and one was released as an exclusive, I got a feeling it was a concept Hasbro and Dekartomi were willing to experiment with, but it's one that Transformers and the Collectors have uh, kind of been in the middle about. Like, it's not the worst gimmick, but it's not the greatest either. But there's Shard's alt mode. She transforms into a stone helicopter. There's her face sculpt and, of course, her robot mode on this side of the box. One side, you've got the poster image for Legacy United. On the back, there's some product photos. Shard transforms back and forth between robot mode and helicopter mode in 13 steps. And she has the uh, largest wep weapon where you can take apart the uh, intake, intake en the engine thrusters and the uh, blades of her helicopter mode. And you can combine them all into a... Uh, uh, double, I want to use the term double barrel, but I guess it's a double, uh, double firing crossbow, uh, which is pretty, pretty unique looking. And for the uh, weaponizer gimmick, it shows only a few parts of her, and that's because unfortunately Shard, Arch, she's the weakest at incorporating the weaponizer gimmick. There's one whole part of her that just you sit off to the side and doesn't really, uh, isn't really capable of transforming into a weaponizer. Either, so that's uh, a bit of a letdown in that regard, but overall I really enjoy Shard's appearance. I honestly thought that her mostly green and yellow paint job looked a lot like Springer, so I thought maybe she might have been a clone of Springer here when I first saw her. Er, so uh, yeah, all these uh, figures have unique paint jobs. And lastly, but definitely by no means least, we have the two uh, figures that I haven't shown yet. and. They are the two smallest uh, Infernic Universe Rock Lords released in the Legacy United line. They're the only core class figures we've gotten. Uh, the uh, first one to be released was Boulder Crash, who was released in uh, Wave 1 along with uh, Magnus. Yes, uh, Shard was released in Wave 2, and then Nucleus was released in Wave 3 along with this guy. Uh, I'm sorry, no. Uh, Nucleus was released in Wave 3. This guy has the, been released in Wave 4. This is Geocron. He's a... Uh, Repaint with a new head sculpt of Boulder Crash. And yeah, they're for being the smallest of the Infernic Universe Rock Lords, I'm really impressed with how these guys uh, turned out. Uh, the exact same artwork is used on the, bo the box for Geocron as it was for uh, Boulder Crash. It's just inset slightly more, so the front wheel, wheel on uh, Boulder Crash, is, the image of his alt mode is elevated slightly higher than... Um, Geocrons on the box, but it's the same exact art. It's literally the same exact artwork on the sides of the box. You've got uh, the exact same motorcycle. It's just done in their uh, respective paint jobs. Boulder Crash is almost entirely red, while Geocron is gold with some blue highlights. And oddly enough, on um, when you flip them around to the other side of the box, uh, Geocron and Boulder Crash each have the opposite half of the poster image for the Legacy United line, so if you get both these guys in the box at the same time, I am they make uh, both halves of the poster, so that's a really fun thing to see there. Come on here to the back of the box, Bull Ox, uh, Ox, they have different product photos for their robot mode, even though it's the same uh, product photo for the uh, alt mode. Um, they at, oh, at first glance, it looks like that uh, Boulder Crash and Geocron transform into motorcycles, but they actually have three wheels, so they're actually uh, motor trikes. Like, so that's a uh, pretty nice, the pretty unique uh, alt mode. Oh, you don't see three-wheeled uh, transformer vehicles as often as you'd think there'd be. Um, but yeah, I really enjoy that they at least did a different... Uh, 
used a different photo for uh, Geochron's robot mode. They both transform back and forth between both modes in 10 steps. And as I'm saying, um, um, unlike uh, past core class Transformers figures, which uh, tried to be the same size as the uh, weaponizers but couldn't quite do it, uh, for Geochron and Boulder Crash, they are weaponizers as well. All you really do is flip out the uh, blade, the sword blade that they have, have, and then you attach, attach them to a Transformers figure, and then their entire vehicle mode with the blade, ex with the sword blade extended out, becomes a sword that the larger Transformers can use. So, yeah, it's just a one-step transformation to their, uh, to their weaponizer mode. Uh, in in box the. Uh, sword blade is packaged separately and it's packaged on the same side of the box for both uh, Geochron and Boulder Crash so for those wondering if there was any uniqueness to Geochron compared to Boulder Crash besides his different sculpted robot mode he robot mode head it, uh, then no there is not uh, if you were to um, decapitate these guys then you'd have two of the exact same figure just done in different paint jobs and it's come to my attention recently that uh, the last two uh, Infernic Universe Rock Lords to be released, uh, Geochron and Calcitron, uh, their designs are actually based off of some uh, rock monsters that appeared in an episode of the Transformers The Headmasters cartoon show. So that's uh, so they don't just uh, solely aren't a loose homage to the GoBots Rock Lords. They're also an homage to do an episode of Transformers the Headmasters in which rock monsters ended up fighting the Transformers. So that's a pretty nice nod to that. And so just to show these guys off in the order in which they were released, we first got Boulder Crash and Nuke Ash and Magnius. We then got Hot Shard. We then got Hot Nucleus. We then got officially we got Geochron, and lastly, we got Calcitron on inside the uh, Star Raider Thunderwing box set. And, and that is pretty much all six of the, uh, six of the uh, Infernic Universe Rock Lord Transform armors. Uh, they're all uh, pretty impressive looking. Looking and uh, trying to hold on to as many of them as I can at the same time. So yeah, they're all quite a motley group of uh, Transformers action figures, so yeah, overall a uh, fun bunch of uh, modern day versions of the Rock Lords. So without further delay, let's get these guys out of the box and take a close look, look at them in their robot modes. Alright, and so here are all six of the Infernic Universe Rock Lords, including Calcitron, out of their boxes, standing side by side with each other, and they are an impressive uh, rock solid group of Transformers action figures, and yes, that pun was intended. Ended, ended. If I say any more rock puns, then please don't, uh, then please don't uh, give me the stone cold shoulder. <laughs> but jokes aside, uh, I really impressed with how how these guys look. Again, um, um, the most unique one out of all six of these is Shard, since she is has not been repainted or retooled into any other uh, Infernic Universe Earth uh, characters. Her mold is currently a one-time use. Um, she does have some uh, impressive light piping on the back of her head, and I believe she's the only one of the six that does, in fact, have light piping, so that's a nice thing to see there. Um, here. Um, the only, again, the only differences between uh, Geochron and Boulder Crash is that they have different head sculpts. So there's some uh, close-ups of their head sculpts right there. Uh, Boulder Crash has slightly a slightly more uh, pointed face, and it reminds... And he has horns on the top of his head, which kind of, kind of sort of reminds me of the Viacons from the Transformers Prime series. And the Geochron's head sculpt is based on one of the uh, rock monsters that attacked the Transformers in the uh, Japanese exclusive, the Headmasters cartoon. Same thing with Calcitron. His head is inspired by one of the uh, rock monsters from the Headmasters. Uh, the only difference between in uh, Calcitron and Magnus. Agnius here are their different head sculpts. So there's Magnius's head sculpt. Uh, it does, uh, since it has a mouth plate, I personally think it looks kind of sort of like Optimus Prime, but then it could get, look like other mouth plated characters such as Spinister. And that's one thing I tried to mention but got distracted when they were st these guys were still in their boxes. Uh, so far, Hasbro has not come out with any bios or background information for the Infernic Universe 
Universe Transformers. So these characters, uh, they're officially they're neither Autobots nor Decepticons, but since Hasbro hasn't come out with any bios or background information on them, it's uncertain if these guys are heroic or villainous Transformers characters. Uh, Calcitron at least can be considered a villainous character since he's packed with um, Thundertron and he's one of the Star Raiders pirates. Alright, so Calcitron at least is an unfriendly, uh, uh, villainous uh, character. But as for the others, it's kind of hard to tell. I guess Geochron could also be considered villainous since his head sculpt's based on one of the, uh, again, one of the rock monsters from Transformers the Headmasters. But as for the other figures, Aegir's, um, Aegir's uh, Nucleus, I think he might be a heroic char character. Er, but then again, it's hard to tell. Also, un un until Hasbro decides to uh, either make a comic book or come up with uh, bios on these Transformers characters, then they're kind of uh, divide. It's up to you to decide if they're heroic or villainous Transformers characters. Personally, I wouldn't mind uh, seeing them being divided into different factions. I would, uh, if I had to choose more villainous characters, I'd definitely go with Calcitron and Geocron being villainous. Um, Nucleus, I consider more heroic. Um, Boulder Crash, I would consider him heroic since I consider Geochron villainous, and then that just leaves a uh, Magnus and Shard. I honestly don't know what side they would stand on, but overall, they're pretty impressive uh, Transformers figures. Uh, articulation's pretty standard, same that you get with the other, with most other Transformers action figures their size. The main difference is because of the weaponizer gimmick, uh, some parts of them do tend to fall off, such as Shard's arms, they tend to pop off easily at the shoulder. Both of her arms uh, popped off when I was getting her out of the box. And yes, uh, technically Calcitron is the first of these six action figures that I transformed for the first time, because when he's inside Thundertron's box, he's packaged in the uh, bottom corner of the box, transformed into his alt mode, so I transformed him into robot mode for the first time to do a size comparison here with the other uh, Rock Lore or Transformers. And um, the only difference between Calcitron and Magnus, uh, I already said it, is their head sculpts apart from the paint jobs, so it's kind of uh, not that big of a deal, Calcitron on being one of the Star Raiders, uh, it kind of feels like he would have been better released uh, East uh, individually instead of packaged with Thundertron inside Thundertron's box. I kind of wish they would have done Thundertron as a Voyager class figure and just uh, considered Night Scream an uh, extra accessory piece, but I guess they figured uh, for those wanting to go completist on the uh, Rock Lord Infernak Universe bots that making Calcitron part of that box set and selling it as a leader class figure would be incentive. It enticed me since I wanted to go completist on these guys and I didn't think I was going to get a chance at owning Calcitron in my collection. And But yeah, I'm really impressed with how they all turned out. Um, out um, uh, comparing Nucleus to his mold mates, uh, switching him and Shard around. I accidentally uh, knocked Geochron onto the floor. See if I can lower uh, Shard's arm so her four uh, blades aren't uh, sticking out in front. Um, officially, you're supposed to put two, uh, um, going on the photos on her instruction sheet and on her box, two of the helicopter blades are supposed to just uh, be hanging off of her back, off the helicopter rotor. But you can uh, put all four of them here on her arms to make it look like she has four blades. So I think that makes her look a lot more uh, menacing and intimidating. Aiding, but uh, as far as um, uh, newly sculpted parts versus retooled parts, comparing uh, uh, Nucleus with uh, Magnus, who was the original use of the mold, um, flipping them around, I believe that almost all of the uh, majority of the parts are... Uh, at least half the parts are new. The uh, lower legs, the uh, eggs, the uh, side armor pieces here on the lower leg, that's new. The feet are new, but the uh, the uh, thighs, the pelvis is the same. Uh, the joints in the ankles are the same. The elbow joints are the same, and I believe, yes, even the armor on, on the uh, lower arm, which is painted silver here on Nucleus, the uh, uh, lower stone... Uh, sculpted detailing, that's the same as on Magnus. Uh, the hands are the same, the fists are the same. Uh, the shoulders are sculpted differently, but the um, upper part of the arm, arm at the bicep, that's the same. Aim, uh, I think they have, uh, yeah, they have the same sculpted uh, 
if you remove their uh, backpacks, they have the same sculpted, sculpted uh, uh, back torso oh, as each other. Other uh, the uh, uh, chest parts, which is where the front wheels are stored, or in that's different on Nucleus, along with his different head sculpt and of course his different weapon. But the wheels themselves are the exact same as they are on Nucleus and all, as Magnus and also Calcitron. So yeah, I'd say about half the parts on Nucleus are new, while the other parts are the exact same as his mold mates. Hey, okay, so overall, oh these guys. These uh, figures are are again. They're a pretty uh, itty, uh fantastic uh, Transformers action figures. I can't think of any other Transformers figures that have been built as built as hard as stone as these guys have been. And but yeah, that's pretty much it. I like the designs of them all, the paint jobs of them. As far as having a favorite amongst all six of these guys, I uh, um. For me personally, I, it's a tie between uh, Magnus and Nucleus. I really enjoy that these guys are black and white because they remind me a lot of Runabout and Runamuck and having opposite paint jobs. But I li really like the designs of all three molds. Um, oh, it's the mold share between Boulder Crash and Geocron. It's a pretty impressive looking core class figure. And then, of course, Shard is uh, pretty impressive looking. Uh, looking, I really enjoy. Uh, or the different shades of green and yellow that were used on her. Er, and while they're all, their names are all uh, puns on uh, different types of rocks or words associated with rocks and stones and ge oh, and geology. Yeah, I don't know if they're the same color as the types of rocks that they're named after. After, but there are uh, rocks that are all these colors that are found out in out on, that are found on planet Earth. Or so that's really nice there. Uh, Shard's mostly green. She reminds me of limestone. Calcitron, um, since he's mostly white, he reminds me of uh, uh, sandstone. And stone. Uh, Magnus, as his name implies, he reminds me of volcanic mafic rock, which is black. Um, Geochron's mostly uh, gold, uh, old paint job. Um, it's not quite gold, but it reminds me of fool's gold, so old, which is pyrite. All right, I can't remember the names of red stones like red stones like Boulder Crash. There are some blue stones that can be found at time. Imes, Imes, and I remember seeing on the beach some blue rocks that were almost the same shade of blue as Calcitron here is, but I don't remember the name of the rock material that blue rocks are made of. If it's actually a calcite or if it's calcium, um, it's not calcium, but if, or um, but yeah, I. Really like how these guys are. The only minor gripe I have, I have amongst all six of them, um, is that um, on Boulder Crash and Geocron, the handle that is used for them when you transform into their weaponizer mode, it doesn't have any hinges or swivel joints, so it just ends up hanging off the back of them. So it looks like they have uh, sticks hanging out, poking out of their backs. I'll let you make what you will of that. And then another minor gripe I have is that um, the heads on all three of the Magnus mold, they're all hollowed out on the back, so uh, you could joke that Magnus, Nucleus, and Calcitron are all brainless, aimless, and then of course Shard, her parts fall off too easily. E, but other than those minor nitpicks, I'm just really thrilled to have all six of these figures. So without further delay, A, to prevent, stop myself from babbling, let's get these guys transformed into their alt modes and wrap up the review. Alright, and so here they are transformed into their alt modes. Again, Magnus, Nucleus, and Calcitron all transformed into into uh, stone trucks. Boulder Crash and Geocron, stone tricycles, and or motor trikes, trikes rather. And of course, Shard is the only one who transforms into a helico helicopter since she's her own unique mold so far. I personally hope that we do, if we do get more um, uh, Infernic Universe Rock Lords, that we get um, Shard gets re painted and retooled into more uh, or uh, female characters characters but yeah I wouldn't mind uh, seeing shard ards mold redecoed into different color schemes uh, Magnus was um, I personally felt because black's my favorite color he's mostly a charcoal gray of being uh, based on a uh, mag mag magma rock uh, that's uh, made after lava gets solidified and cools down. His mostly black paint job was one that I personally enjoyed a lot. 
And so seeing the mold used again in white and blue for Nucleus and Calcitron was really impressive. Same thing with Boulder Crash being repainted and retooled into Geochron. At the start of their view, I thought Geochron's uh, highlighted parts, such as the blade of his uh, dagger, dagger, were done in blue ooh, paint, but it's actually purple. Purple, and it's a... Uh, and the parts on Geochron that are blue, you, it's not quite as noticeable on oh, on Boulder Crash, but they're bright red here on him. And it's designed to mimic the fact that he looks like he has uh, lava flowing inside of him. Uh, Geochron, I guess you could joke that um, he has silver flowing through him. Through him. Uh, silver, I found out, has this kind of bluish-purple color to it before it's uh, refined and hardened into, sil into silver metal. Metal, but um, for the ones that roll around, um, uh, all around, they fa they roll around uh, fairly decently, at least on my table here, which is a wooden surface. They roll around kind of great. I said I wasn't going to show off any of the weaponizer modes, but for Boulder Crash and Geochron, to get from vehicle mode to weaponizer mode, all you do is uh, flip the sword around the blade of the dagger sword 180 degrees, and then there's a five millimeter peg here on the back, and so you just put it into the Put it into the hand of a larger Transformers action figure, and yeah, now it's a sword. So, uh, it's, it's the simple design, but it's one that, uh, works effectively. Yeah, but yeah, I really enjoy having all of these guys here. Uh, again, the new weapons that uh, Nucleus has, they transform into a pair of rocket boosters, so he at least uh, can travel faster than Magnus and Calcitron, since their weapons of axes just end up, uh, bulking up the back of their, uh, back of their truck modes. Um, Shard's uh, helicopter blade, I kind of showed it off a moment ago. You can get it to spin in around, in around. It can spin at a quite a, it's quite freely and freely and quite at a good speed. Eat them. She doesn't have any uh, sculpted uh, landing gear on her, or, but I guess you could argue that these three little uh, nubs, there's one here on the uh, nose cone and then there's two more here on the back. Like those, you could, I guess you could argue, are act as landing gear here, or fake landing gear if you want. But yeah, overall, I'm really impressed with how these guys look. Look, uh, look uh, the order in which they were released, we got Boulder Crash and Magnus again in Wave 1. Unshard was released in Wave 2, Nucleus in Wave 3, Geochron in Wave 4, and Calcitron is the only exclusive exclusive, uh, Infernic Universe Rock Lord, that's Rock Lord that we've gotten, and I really hope that he'll remain the only uh, one if they decide to make more of these. But with the Legacy United line ending after Wave 5, I have which, in which there's no Infernic Universe characters being released, East, uh, like most of the Weaponizer Transformers gimmicks, um, they're fun, gimmicky Transformers, what they try to do, and they at least homage both the uh, Rock Monsters from one episode of Transformers the Headmasters, but also the Rock Lords characters from the GoBots franchise. I so for what they are being uh, Transformers characters that transform into s vehicles made out of stone. Oh, and it's also a nice homage to the Flintstones cartoon series, which uh, it created the idea of vehicles being made out of stone. That was something that hadn't really been thought of before, or and if it had, then I honestly don't know of any examples as famous as the Flintstones for that. But yeah, all around they're pretty fun-looking Transformers action figures. Not every, tra not all Transformers fans and collectors have embraced the Infernic Universe characters. Again, partially because Hasbro hasn't created any uh, bios or background information on these guys. So, oh, it's really hard to tell if they are supposed to be heroic or villainous Transformers characters. Uh, the only one who is technically n now is Calcitron, since he's one of the uh, Thundertron's uh, Star Raiders, Star Raiders, Star Seeker pirates. So, Calcitron, at least, is um, up to no good. But then also, uh, one could argue that he's actually been brainwashed and been tricked by Thundertron into joining the... Uh, or blackmailed into joining the, uh, the uh, Star Seekers. So, he could be there against his own... He could be a member of Thundertron's tr crew against his own free will. So, it swings both ways. A still. Um, for me, personally, I like to think that the... Uh, these guys are divided in half, and that half of them are fighting with the Autobots, and the other half are fighting with the Decepticons and the more villainous Transformers armors. But until we get, uh, until unless Hasbro and Decartoni decide to delve into the background with these uh, 
with these Infernike Universe Transformers characters, and it's really hard to say if they're uh, heroic or villainous Transformers. For now, they are their own faction, and, and they're kind of off doing their own thing. Whether or not they're going to ultimately announce that, uh, just like Calcitron, the others are part of the uh, Star Seeker Pirates, and that they're part of Thunderst Th Thundertron Star Raiders crew, you know, I honestly couldn't say. But I do hope that... Uh, up that we do get more uh, informate these become more fleshed out Transformers characters and aren't just a one-time action figure thing here for the uh, Legacy United line. And right, so this has been my review on the complete collection of the Transformers Legacy United I did Infernak Universe in Ernak Universe Rock Lords, it's really nice to see the uh, Rock Lords being reimagined not only as Transformers action figures, but having stone vehicles for alt modes instead of just pl instead of just rocks. It gives uh, more, it gives slightly more incentive than them just being sim just being rocks for collectors to buy them all. As far as which of the three molds is my favorite of them all, oh, it's kind of hard for me to pick because I enjoy oh yeah, oh yeah, all three molds. I think they're all impressive in their own right. Like, if I had to pick a favorite, unfortunately I'd have to go with um, Magnus. His pickup truck mode I find more enjoyable than Boulder Crash's trike mode and Shard's helicopter mode. But, but again, they're all really nice looking, looking, looking. The most unique one out of the all six is Shard. Then after that it's Nucleus, and then uh, Boulder Crash, Ash, Geochron, Magnus, and Calcitron are not not so unique compared to each other. Other. So thank you guys all so much. So much. This has been the TFN Geek. This has been my look at all six of the Infernic Universe Rock Lords, Transformers action figures, Magnus, Boulder Crash, Shard, Nucleus, Geochron, and Calcitron, who is only available in the uh, Star Raider Leader Class Thundertron box set. But since he's one of these action figures, I decided to include him in the review. Whether or not I'll re review him a second time when I look at the Star R Raiders is uncertain. But for now, here are here is the complete collection of the uh, modern day Rock Lord Transform Ormers characters. Whether or not Hasbro and Dakartomi will revisit the Rock Lords or continue to visit them once the Legacy United line en ends is uncertain, but I personally enjoy having all six of these action figures in my collection. So thank you guys all so much, and until next time you guys, stay safe, stay healthy. If you can find these action figures, figures then I recommend and getting them and adding them to your Transformers collection. They are unique in the fact that they're the only Transformers characters that transform into stone vehicles made out of rocks instead of metal. So until next time, you guys, thank you so much. Transform and roll out. Goodbye, everyone. Da -da 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 -da.